Oslo was a miracle. However, it was a miracle that we um, that occurred after we worked for 13 years on building trust, on having many, many meetings with Palestinian leaders, with journalists, with business people, and with normal folks. We built trust. Um, we looked at um, the difficulties. We understand constraints. And we developed an understanding of what was possible and what wasn't possible. <laughs> we were very much aware of possible the spoil action and the dangers. Um, knowing having done this, it made it possible for me at the negotiating table to write Annex 3 and Annex 4. Annex 3 spoke about cooperation in all fields of people to people and government to government activities on industry, agriculture, trade, tourism, media, education, culture, and much more. And Annex 4 spoke about the need of um, building housing and social economic um, action in the wider regional context. After concluding the Oslo Agreement in September 1993, um, we did not overcome um, many political or no security challenges. On the security side, Palestinian terror strongly diminished Israeli support. Israeli settlements diminished Palestinian support. We did not listen to Arafat's advice not to go to a permanent status agreement, but to move gradually forward. And the international community did not accept the Israeli need to speak to the entire region and come to an agreement on the, with the entire region, but only um, supported moves on bilateral negotiations where only the Israeli side had to give while the um, Palestinian side could not um, give the Israelis what we really needed. Um, nevertheless, based on the gradualism of, based on the gradualism of um, Oslo, um, 10 agreements were signed um, and um, we had a lot of positive developments. I'll give you one example on people to people. You had um, a group of um, psychologists, kindergarten, um, teachers, um, occupational therapists, uh, social workers who went to the refugee camp in Jenin and we worked, they, this group of, of almost only ladies worked with the um, refugee camp people on early, early, child, early child education. Um, this was unfortunately came to an end after the second intifada. Um, it was the Barak government that dropped the um, concept of the concept of uh, gradualism uh, and uh, the Barak government had an everything or nothing approach in life everything or nothing never works and um, the Palestinians in the end chose violence and um, we made mistakes they made mistakes and the uh, also process as such came to an end um, after the negotiations filled in 2000, 2001, uh, the fact that we had people-to-people -people activities actually created a safety network um, that allowed us to revive relations and get back, slowly get back on the track through a long and complicated process of trial and error. Um, today, I would argue that the Oslo process as a political process is dead. The king has died, but the new king lives and the new king is the, are the Abraham Accords. The Abraham Accords allow us to work together, to, go, to work together with um, the entire region, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, um, Egypt, Jordan, um, even India, um, the United States and Europe, of course. And um, it gives us the opportunity to rebuild a more well-constructed peace process. The fact that there has been people-to-people um, -people activities allows us today to deal with the major issues that um, the world has to face. Climate change, um, food, the, the um, difficulties in food security, difficulties in water security, growing unemployment of academic youth. All these issues can, can have to be 
um, promoted on the government level, but the real action is only on the people-to-people -people action bank experts of everybody if we all work together. Um, the Alliance for Middle East Peace has prepared the way for all these important activities and I, give, I want to offer my congratulations to the wonderful work Olmet has done, is doing and shall do further in the near future. Thank you.